So if you're on a popular distro like Arch, a lot of the fonts you're going to want to use are probably already in your standard repos, or in the case of Arch, they might also be in the AUR. But from time to time, you're going to run into cases where you need a font that you just cannot find in a package anywhere. And I ran into this problem when I was trying to change my thumbnail design. So previously I was using a version of, of uh, Noto Sans, and now I switched over to one of the Bebas fonts, which I could not find a package for anywhere. So so to fix this, I had to go and manually install the font. Now, this isn't a difficult process by any means, but I thought I would just document it for anyone who, I guess, is fairly new to Linux. Okay, so if you don't know, the first thing I should probably show you is how to actually list out what fonts you actually have installed. So if we just run the FC list command, that will basically list out every single font I have installed on my system. Now, this should already give you a bit of an understanding of where these fonts are actually installed on my system. So... As we can see, they're in the slash user, or slash USR, slash share, slash fonts directory. So if we CD into that directory, so slash USR, slash share, slash fonts, and we go LS. Now, as we can see, there's a bunch of folders in here. Let's just bring up my terminal file manager for a better look. So as we can see, I've got my Adobe fonts in here. I've got my awesome fonts, uh, my Bebos fonts, Cantrell, a bunch of other fonts in here as well. Now, this is one of the locations you can install fonts in your system. There is another location for it, so that'll be in the slash user slash share, uh, sorry, slash user slash local slash share slash fonts. Now, I don't actually have any fonts installed in this directory. I don't even have the slash fonts directory in that location. So, you can install fonts here as well. I'm guessing the arch just defaults to the other location I showed you before, but you can also install fonts here as well. So you also have the option of installing them in your home directory in a .fonts folder. Now, if you install fonts here, they're only going to be installed for your users. So if you're on a single user system, then it's not really a problem to do that. But just keep that in mind if you do have a bunch of user accounts. If you install fonts in the .fonts directory in your home directory, then they're not going to be available to other users. But I can't imagine that really being a problem for most home Linux systems. So you might be asking now, where can I actually find some fonts? So obviously we're going to go to the internet. Now, my favorite website right now is Font Squirrel. I ended up finding the font that I'm using for my thumbnails here. So that is this one here, Bebas. I'm not going to try to pronounce the second part of it. But... We can just pick anything from here. So there's a bunch of fonts that are already packaged up, like the Roboto fonts or the Open Sans fonts. So we're not going to bother with something like that. Let's pick something a little different. Let's go a retro font and see what we can find in here. Let's take this Pacifico font. So on most Linux systems, out of the box, they will support TTF and OTF fonts. Any bitmap fonts, you generally have to do a bit of extra work in your font config to get those working. But with OTF and TTF fonts, they'll generally just work out of the box. This video isn't really about the differences between the different font formats, though. I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there. But anyway, let's just download this TTF font. Now, let's just chuck it in my... Yeah, my desktop will work. It'll download... From this website, it downloads as a zip. So let's go back over to the terminal, go into my desktop, and let's just unzip that folder we just downloaded. So that is this Pacifico one. And as we can see from the output from unzip, there's only one file in here that we care about and that is the pacifico.ttf. You can have a look at the license if you really want to, but unless you're doing commercial use, generally this really doesn't matter. So what are we actually gonna do with this .ttf file? So all we're gonna be doing is moving it into this directory that we saw before. So you can put it in a folder, but you don't have to. Generally though, it's probably a good idea to put them in a folder just so they're a bit more grouped together. So let's just do that now. The pacifico.ttf, we're gonna move it to slash user slash share slash fonts, and we'll just drop it in there. And as we see, we don't have permission to add that. So make sure you actually add sudo to the front of this command and type in your password to do that. And if we go back over to that directory now, slash share, if I can spell, I'm really bad at that. This is why I don't do live programming in case you ever wondered. And as we can see, that font is now in here. So if we just run the fc list command again, and we pipe that into grep, and we type in Pacifico, or, or just partially type in Pacifico. As we can see, that font is now listed in that directory. And it also tells us the style that that font is in. So this font only has a regular style. Some might also have bold and like extra condensed medium and things like that. But this font specifically only has a regular font. So at this point, you're 
almost done. So if you just want to use the font for your terminal or programs that specifically load up fonts, then it will work fine at this point. You don't have to do anything else. But there's some fonts that will actually go to your font config and say, hey, what fonts are actually available? So for those programs, I think LibreOffice and GIMP fall under that category. There's one more thing that we're going to have to do. So all we have to do now is run the fc cache command, and that'll basically just update our font config cache. So let's just test out this font and make sure it's actually working. So if I just go into my Alacrity config, and I don't know what just happened to, oh right, I cleared my terminal. Anyway, uh, let's go down to my font. I'll zoom in on this a bit so you guys can see it a bit better. And let's just set this to Pacifico and set the style to regular just so it doesn't try to do anything weird. And as we can see, my terminal now looks absolutely disgusting. Please never run this font on your terminal. It's a very bad idea. Honestly, I wouldn't run anything besides a mono font on my terminal, but definitely don't run this font on your terminal if you want to get any work done. But regardless of that, as we can see, the font is actually working. So I'm going to set this back to a sensible font now so I can actually read everything. And yeah, that seems to be working as we would expect. Let's just make sure it's working in something like LibreOffice Writer. So if we go in here, give that a second to load up. Okay, so Pacifico, yep, cool. The font seems to be here. It seems to be working as we would expect as well. So yeah, that is all the characters seem to be here. Yep, okay, this font is working as we would expect. So as you just saw, it's actually really, really easy to install a font manually. So if you want, say, one of the patched nerd fonts, for example, and there isn't a package for it, and I know that the AUR package for nerd fonts complete hasn't been updated in a while. So if you want something like that, all you're gonna have to do is clone the repo, copy out the files you want, put them into the slash user slash share slash fonts directory, and you'll be done. And it worked perfectly fine, no hassle whatsoever. So if there's ever a font that you want and there isn't a package for it, don't be worried. It's actually really, really easy to install by yourself. If for whatever reason that FC cache doesn't actually work, there is a way to actually fix that. So occasionally for whatever reason, the cache files won't get updated properly. So what we can actually do, if we just have a look at the man page for FC cache, there is an option in here called dash R. And basically what dash R is going to do is really force the cache files. So what it's gonna do is delete all existing cache files and then regenerate them. So if for whatever reason it doesn't work, make sure you just run FC cache again, but this time with the dash R option. Or obviously you could also go and manually delete all of the cache files, but doing it like this is just a little bit easier. So this will take considerably longer to go now, but it still works as we would expect. And if you had any problems actually getting the font to work, this probably will fix that problem. Assuming you obviously have the font in the correct directory. One last thing I should probably mention is how to find the names of fonts when they differ from the names of their files, because a couple of fonts do actually do that. Actually, I would say most fonts do that. So if we just run fc-list, which is the command that we run to list out all of the fonts, and we run that with grep, and I'm just gonna grep on my JetBrains fonts. So as we can see, the JetBrains mono-extra-bold font is here and the actual name of the font is a little bit different. So the name of the font is this right here. So JetBrains space mono space extra bold, which is a little bit different from the name of the actual file. So the name of the file, it doesn't use a dash or a space between the uh, JetBrains and mono. It just has the words connected and then it uses a dash between mono and extra bold. So make sure you just check the font list if you can't find a font because sometimes it will actually differ from the name of the file. So I know this video was, I guess, a bit more basic than what I normally do, but what I wanted to do today was just explain a really basic concept. So if someone asked me a question like this, like how did you install this font without it being in a package? I can just say, here is a video that I've done on this rather than having to explain it to a bunch of different people over and over again. So that's pretty much why I made this video. I don't expect to get a ton of views, but hey, maybe it will, I, I have no idea. So anyway, before I end the video, I'd like to thank my patrons, Andre Road, LQ Larry, and Zilva, who help make this channel possible. So if you want to support the channel, or if you just want to have your name read out at the end of a video, then there'll be a link to my Patreon down below. I've also got my social links, so that'll be my Discord, my Telegram, all of that sort of stuff. And I've also got my alternate video platform, so my library and my BitTube. So one extra thing is that I actually have some Amazon affiliate links as well. So down below, I've got some links to the hardware that I use and things like that. So feel free to check any of those out. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And lastly, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and... 
I'm out. <laughs>